Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Maximum Render Hot Tips, the show where I highlight the little bits and pieces in Maximum Render that might otherwise pass you by. My name is James Coleman and I'm the Maximum Render Mentor at the University of Brighton Centre for Design Technology. And in today's Maximum Render Hot Tip I'm going to be looking at RGB masks. RGB masks are a feature that's commonly found in all render engines and this is how to use them in Maxwell. Here's the scene that I'll be working with today and what I want to do is use an RGB mask so I can easily edit all of these objects separately in Photoshop. The reason I want to do that is so that I can definitely customise this scene and give each object its different settings. Now creating RGB masks is a similar process to using the object or material ID channels to create a makeshift alpha, which I covered in an earlier video. Now whether you use objects or materials to create your RGB mask will depend upon which you have fewer of. In this scene I've got fewer materials than I do objects, so that's what I've used to create my masks. This is my list of materials, and if I open them up and go to Material Properties, you can see that the material ID in this material is red, and the same applies for this glass material, and the same for this water material. And the reason is that all three materials here are applied to this glass of juice. What I want to do is be able to isolate this object in Photoshop later on. So I've given every material applied to it a red material ID. For the keys on the table, I've given them a green ID. And for the product itself, I've given them all a blue ID. And finally, what I've done is enable the material ID channel in the render options. And when you go to render, this is what you get. If I hover my mouse over the M icon in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see that these are my material IDs. Red glass, green keys, blue product. I can then save this MXI and open it up in Photoshop. So here's the MXI opened up in Photoshop. And now what I've got to do is, using the extra material ID layer, put my masks into Photoshop. First thing I'm going to do is click and drag the render layer onto the new layer icon to make a copy of it. Hide the two render layers, select the material ID layer and unhide it. And then go to Channels, select the red channel, Command A to select all and Command C to copy. Go back to my layers, make the render layer visible, make sure it's selected. Then make a new mask, go to Channels, make sure the mask is visible and paste in the red mask. Then hide the mask, go back to my layers unhide the other render, and now what I've got is the original render behind, but the glass is now on its own separate layer. So for example, if I wanted to change the levels on this layer, create a new levels adjustment layer, lock it to the below layer, and simply adjust as necessary. And the adjustment will not affect the rest of the image. And what I've done here is simply exactly the same thing, but for the green and blue material IDs. So now I've got each object on its own layer, and the background as a separate layer itself. So now as long as I make sure that the adjustment layers are clipped to the layer below, I can adjust the layers at will. Of course on the bottom layer both the background and the table are still visible but this is because it was impossible to use RGB to select the table as well because it would have been touching the other objects. You can only use RGB masks when the objects aren't touching. If I wanted to isolate the table on its own layer as well what I would do is use exactly the same technique but instead of with materials use it on the objects. Make the table object ID white and all of the other object IDs black. Thanks very much for watching. Any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below, or email me at maxwellrenderbrightontdt at gmail.com, or tweet me at jcom underscore design. I'll see you again soon.